What's going on guys? So today I'm back with another video and today's video is going to be about knife maintenance and just all the things that I think a person needs to maintain a knife. Now you don't need everything that's in this uh, shot here, but I'm going to talk about the main things that you need and then the things that I use and find myself using all the time. Um, so first off, you need, you don't have to have, I went without one of these for a long time, but having some kind of tear down mat or something is always nice to have because I can't tell you how many screws like out of a spider co or something that I've dropped and it just went missing forever. Now, luckily I have a bunch of extra spider co, you know, clip screws, but a lot of times you drop a screw, you're done, especially if you have a carpet floor because they disappear and they're never be seen again. This is some cheap one. I think I got it off Amazon. I don't, I don't think that's a brand. I'm not really sure, but just some kind of cheap tear down mat. You don't need any of the fancy like asphalt trays and all these trays that are a hundred dollars that have specific bit holders. Now, don't get me wrong. If you have one of those, super cool. I had one and I never used it. I ended up just using this rubber, you know, mat that I got off Amazon or wherever. Um, if I find out where I got this, I'll link it in the description below. Actually, it might've been off a site called Countycom. And if it is, I'll link it in the description down below. But uh, this thing was like maybe 10 bucks or something. I don't know. Um, my most used tool is definitely going to be this Weeha bit driver. Let me see if I can do this with one hand. This, there, I have two of these. This particular one I use more because the bits hold inside the handle. And I've just, I don't, I think this comes with bits, but I've loaded with the bits I normally use. So T6, T8, T10, uh, actually T6, T8, T9, T10, T15, and then a quarter inch. I think it's quarter inch, maybe 5 16 hex. But these are the ones I use the most, so it's just what I've loaded up in there. And then um, I've got behind it, you can buy, th these are separate, um, and you can buy these Weha bit kits, just got a bunch of different bits. I just use it for my extra bits. Like I've got an extra T6, some extra T8s, and various other ones. And then it's also got an extension. Um, because I, I actually really like the stubby drivers, um, mainly because I feel like I can get a lot more torque on them. I mean, the bigger ones work too, but I just, I prefer these ones. Um, so that's just what I've been using for the past, I don't know, three or four years. Um, you can also use like, you don't have to buy the expensive Weehaw stuff, although I highly recommend it because the cheap bits, like this is some cheap one from an auto parts store that I used for a long time. Um, and I still use it every once in a while, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But these bits, like these cheap ones, will strip. Like if you have a really hard screw, it'll either A, strip the bit, most likely, or B, you can strip the screw a lot easier. Um, so I highly recommend spending like the $20 it costs to get good Weehaw bits. And then I have i don't think I've ever fully stripped a Weehaw bit. I've had one get close to stripping. It was a T6. Um, and I just don't use it anymore. I use it as a backup. But I've, I never actually fully stripped one. Um... Like I said, this kit um, I had for a while. The main thing I use in this actually is still, um, like I'll use this to hold, like if I'm taking apart a bug out to hold the blade in place or, you know, something random. Um, or like I'll use the small flathead to, like I'll use a small flathead to like move the washers on a bug out. If you've taken a bug out apart, you know what I'm talking about. To like move the washers in and out to get them in when you're getting the blade back in. You know, random little things. But um, yeah, you can use one of these, especially if you're just taking apart like cheap knives and you've taken them apart before and you know that you're not going to strip something. A cheap set like this will work perfectly fine. But like I said, get the Weehaw bits if you can. Um, let's see. Other thing I've used a lot. This is KPL. As you can see, I've had it for many years because the label's worn off. And I've had it for many years and, you know, 300 plus knives. And it's still almost full. <laughs> like, if you buy this, it will last you forever or at least a really, really long time. Um, yeah, so KPL, you can use, I've used a bunch of different ones, but KPL is just the one I've always just kept using. I mean, you can use, I think there's Gunny Lube. Um, there's, he's got like four different, maybe three different KPLs now, heavy, a lightweight. I haven't tried the heavier, the lightweight. Um, I don't know. There's a bunch of different lubes you can use, but just some kind of lube. Um, and then Loctite, this is, you know, Permatex, but Loctite, some kind of thread locker. Um, this is a big deal on like stuff like the bug out, the bug out screws, um, because they're so short, I think it's cause they're so short. I don't know what the reason is, but they'll back out way easier than a lot of other screws. Um, it just prevents, you know, if you're someone who doesn't take your knife apart all the time, just prevents it from the, uh, the screws backing out and then you have a missing screw and that's never fun. Um, let's see, what do we, we'll move on to, move on to the EDCI. This is what I use. 
um, for protecting the blade. Like if you have an M4 blade or a D2, something that's um, not stainless, something like EDCI uh, works for keeping us keeping it not keeping it dry, but it makes it hydrophobic. So the water doesn't want to stick to it and it just makes it easier to, um, it doesn't, makes it not want to stain as easy. Wow, that was hard for my brain. Um, I, before I got this, I used mineral oil for a long time, just basic mineral oil. Um, that works too, but I don't know, the EDCI is just a little bit cleaner because you just spray it on. Like I said, you spray it on, rub it in and wipe it off. Um, but I've been using this for a while and it seems to work. I even, I mean, I use it on stain, uh, stainless blades as well, but you know, that, I like that stuff a lot. There's probably other options. I know KPL has something like that, but that's just what I've been using for the past three or four years and it's worked well. Um, let's see, while we're on the fluids, WD-40, I use this mostly to get tape residue off. Um, like, let me see. Yeah, it's so like this has got some tape residue on it, which I'm not gonna get off right now, I'll get off later. But I actually learned this trick from, um, from Daniel Oz and a few other guys on Instagram. I was trying to figure out how to get tape residue off my Oz and what everybody's preferred method was. And Daniel said he always just used WD-40. And I was like, okay, you know, I'll give it a shot because I had a couple other people also tell me WD-40. And it works really well. So WD-40 for getting tape residue off and cleaning up your knife works great. Um, this is just Windex. It's in an Armor All bottle, but just a cheap bottle that I had and it was basically empty. Um, I buy the big gallon things of Windex, but Windex works really well for cleaning, just cleaning in general. Um, the biggest thing is, this is a, obviously I don't have a good example. The biggest thing I use Windex for is Timascus stuff. Um, if you don't, if you guys don't know this or just titanium stuff in general, if you have anything anodized titanium or, um, you know, it, I don't think it would make a difference on aluminum. Yeah, it should make a difference. Anything that's anodized titanium, um, if it's getting real dull, like if you've ever looked at your Timascus, I don't know, pocket clip or something, and it's real dull, um, it's just from fingerprint oils. So what you can do is you can actually spray this on either the clip or, you know, microfiber or whatever and rub it, and it'll bring that shine back. Same for just normal titanium. Um, it'll bring what the true color is back. So I always keep some of that around. Um, we'll do, we'll cover these real quick just because it's the last tool, I guess. These are Nipex. Um, if you're in the big and the like actual tool world, and I guess these, these have become popular in the EDC world, you'll know what Nipex are. These are God's gift to man as far as when it comes to wrenches. I use these for random, very random knife things. Um, usually for pressing something. Like, for example, pressing... If you've taken apart a PM2 or Para 3, if you're pressing the lanyard tube back into like titanium scales and maybe the clearance is weird, or actually just back into stock G10 scales, the clearance is weird, you can, I'm not gonna do this one handed, actually I can. You can take this and if you get to the right size, you can actually manually press it in and it's way easier. Or um, pressing stuff out, like if you're trying to press one of those things out, um, sometimes this can, this can be easier. You know, you can grab the edge of the scale and press it out or something, whatever. Um, this is very not necessary as far as everything on the list. This is definitely the least necessary thing, but I do find myself using these fairly often. Um, that and just other random things. Um, I think everybody needs a knife sharpener, but you do not need a fancy, you know, wicked edge or cami or whatever. I mean, I've never sharpened this. I've never sharpened this cause I, I don't carry This is probably my least carried knife. Um, especially in my higher end stuff. Just because it's, you know, very graily, if that's a term. Um, I just, this, is, this isn't a safe queen, per se. As you can see, I'm carrying it today. But it's by far my most safe queen of knives. So I've never sharpened it. But I have sharpened my Oz. I've sharpened my Herman. I've sharpened a, I've sharpened a bunch of knives. And every one of them is sharpened on this. I have a Lansky um, style. I don't remember what, what the off-brand. That's not an off-brand. But it's very similar to a Lansky. Um, I have that that I've sharpened a few knives on. You know, you go up through the grits, and it's a fixed angled system. This is just so much easier. Like, I can sharpen a knife on this, you know, from almost nothing, you know, dull up to it's sharp, sharper than I need it in 10 minutes. So this is what I've used. It's just got a core stone if you're, like, really bad, um, you know, edges really bad, like it's got a roller or a chip. Core stone, fine stone. I almost never actually have to use the core stone. I think I've had to use the core stone one time, and it was on... um a spider coat spidey chef that I chipped the blade on. So core stone, fine stone. Uh, you have the ceramic rod. 
and this is a few settings you know you have coarse and fine i just leave it on fine so i'll go here 20 inch guide or 20 uh, degree guide i'll go here you know a set number of times till i feel you know the edge is good it's kind of a off a of feel thing go here a bunch and then you have a leather strop on the back which is also set to 20 um but also in conjunction with that this is a leather strop i got a while ago from usa made blade usa made blade for free um you know there's a million guys that make different strops out here I use this one every once in a while. Like if I just need to strop a knife up, I'll use this. Um, but if I'm doing like the full sharpening thing, I'll just use this. But I don't know a ton about sharpening. I, you know, if I was, if, if my edge was really bad or if I ever actually needed to sharpen this, I wouldn't sharpen this myself. Um, I would send this to my buddy Caleb because he knows a lot more than me about sharpening. But yeah, if you don't want to do anything crazy, like you don't know about sharpening, you know, all the different apexes and all the things, but you just someone that wants to maintain your tools, just get one of these. These work sharp. I think this is just called a pocket sharpener. Um, I'm not sure. There's another one I've showed in like my EDC bag, uh, EDC bag videos. The little tiny square one. It's like ten bucks. That one works really well too. That'll work for probably ninety percent of people. Um, this just works a little bit more because you've got a few more steps and uh, you know it's just it's a bigger bigger thing, so you can do a lot more. This. This is probably what I recommend by far the mo for most people is this little sharpener. Um, and yeah, you don't really need a strop. I mean, this right here, this strop will last a while. So yeah, I believe, yeah, that's everything. So definitely if I was to, a must buy, we'll pick three items on here. It's a must buy. Weeha um, and some bits. I think it comes with most bits. Weeha, <sighs> Weeha, KPL, and a sharpener. If you just do these three things, we'll move this over here. Just these three things, I think you'll be set. Even if you you know don't even need the weeha. These three things. This is all you need for most knife guys. Just need some sort of bits to take the knife apart. Try to get good ones if you can, like the weeha. But if not, these some kind of sharpener and some lube KPL. You don't even really need the loctite just make sure you check your knife regularly um to make sure everything's tight but yeah here we'll throw all the things on here sure strop yes specter yeah so that's all the things i have for my um knife maintenance I'm trying to think if there's anything else i left out um you can also uh, for cleaning the inside of knives like the cleaning the inside of the bearing races and stuff um, I just use a microfiber or I'll use like the, the blue rags, um, blue shop towels. And like I said, you can use either the Windex or um, a lot of time I'll use like alcohol, just isopropyl alcohol or acetone. Well, no, not acetone. You could probably use acetone, but I've never used it for anything other than like uh, anodizing cleaning stuff. So, you know, do whatever you want. But alcohol, um, that also works too in this whole setup. But yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.